We deploy voice as an application, folks. It's that simple. It's that simple. It, there's, it's, we didn't know anything about PBXs. Trust me, I was at Cisco. When I came to Cisco, the, uh, there was nobody here who could talk. talk. I mean, let me give you an example. Uh, I, worked, I worked with some brilliant SEs, data guys. I worked with people who had multiple CCIEs and all this, that, and the other. And every time they go to a customer and start talking this, the first thing they talk about is the reliability. The reliability of this box. My network's down a lot more than my voice. I don't know if I could do that, so I'm worried about that. I said, well, we can engineer and all this, that, and the other. And then they finally come to what they were talking about. Five nines reliability. What's five nines reliability? Five minutes a year. Five minutes of downtime a year. Wow. Are we good at that on the data side? No. No, we're not good at that on the data side. I was an operations manager. I never had to report my data side of availability because it's kind of gray. If you take your laptop and you boot up on a network and get an IP address through DHCP, is the network up? I think the network's up. But if you click on an icon and try to go to a web server or to a server and the server's not there, is that a network issue or an application issue? So it's kind of gray. Was this box reliable? Absolutely. But this is a, this is a really a bad, bad thing to actually point out for me. Because as soon as you did that, you opened up the whole world to me. Let's figure out how we come out with that. Does anybody know how you come up with this number? I mean, you think number of minutes divided by number of downtime minutes or uptime minutes in a period, whatever it is. That's what you get. But there's a lot of other things that go involved here. So let's say that one of these cards, just one of these cards in here, has 24 phones attached to it. I have 600 stations on my PBX. 600. My line cards have 24 phones on each one. If that line card goes out, do I count that as system downtime? Do you? Where's the, where's the tipping point? Where's the point where you say, yes, it's down, and no, it's not? What percentage? I'll tell you what the industry has ended up at. You have to have 30% of all the phone stations down at any one time for this to be called system downtime. So that means that I could come in, I could have a really bad day. Driving into work, had a flat. I was going to be late, so I changed my flat and I drove down the road too fast and a cop pulled me over. Then my wife called me up and told me that, you know, she's leaving me or whatever it is. And I walk into work and I'm just mad as I can be. And I walk by and I say, you know what, I don't care. And I just ripped the card out and 24 phones just went dead. Is that system downtime? No, it's not. If I have 600 stations, how many do I have to turn, to pull cards do I have to pull out before it becomes system downtime? 30% of 600 is how many? 180. I can do some bill pulling. I might calm down before that. That's how they reported that. But you know, the average person at Cisco didn't know that. So man, they were sitting there going, oh my God, we got to do dual this, dual that. Oh, the Christ, price goes up. <laughs> it's exactly what happened. Cisco didn't know what they were doing at that time. I'm telling you, the, 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 we were being played so bad. A lot, so many account teams were being played by the the competition. They, were calling, they weren't calling it IP telephony, they were calling it voice over IP. Even to this day, people call it voice over IP. It's not voice over IP, that's voice over IP. This is IP telephony. Voice is an application. That's what it is. But we must have done something right, because in 2001, started getting some customers who wanted to start looking at this. 2002 was a really good year for us. I mean, downturn in the economy and all that, we still sold a lot of this. We had customers who were looking at it. We'd added features, we got it, got to where we could talk and, and do this. And again, in 2000, number one in the world was Nortel Networks. 
Number one in the enterprise was Avaya. Was Avaya. What? In 2008, 2009, who was number one? Cisco. In a very, very short period of time, we actually came out and changed the world with this on what, what happened. Yeah, but that's, we're still getting killed on the, the mid-market space, at least, at least in Quebec, where I was. Mm -hmm. We're getting killed on the PDX mid-market space. Mm -hmm. With the really? Huh? The IP office, yeah, that low, that low end. I mean, we've never played there very well. I, I think we do. I think we do. I think the business edition 6000 is a great answer to that, to be honest with you. That business edition 6000. Yeah, it's, it's coming. Huh? Excuse me? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the, the, you've got to elevate the discussion. You've got to just not talk about it. And you have to think, er, the time is working in our favor. Because guess what, I, and I don't want to go too far right now, but I'll tell you this much right now. I've got customers telling me today, I've, they don't want voicemail. They, will not, they are not going to do voicemail again. Do you think Emily uses voicemail? I promise you right now, if I picked up my phone and I called Emily's voicemail, she's had her phone for a year and a half. She's never answered a voicemail. She's never set it up. She's never set it up. So guess what? The, the game is changing here. The game is changing. We have to accelerate the change on what is available to these people. Yeah, there's still going to be people who want it, people like me, people like my wife, whatever. But guess what? We're starting to, we're, we're starting to worry about these new people coming in. Voice and all that. Huh? Voicemail never picked up in the Philippines. Yeah. And, and, we, we put down the phone when we did it. Yeah. So, so it's, there's some changes in that. I'm not going to say that we, that we don't have uh, issues in certain markets and everything. But I'm telling you, we did take the, we were the ones who drove this. And, and we need to use that with customers who may not understand what role Cisco played in here. Not because we're the, not, not for anything else, but we have delivered consistently and driven this market. And driven this market. Does that make sense? So let's just talk about how a solution might look from a Cisco perspective. Yes. What about Calcos work? And what about the flows for IMS plus five plus uh, four switches? Do we have? Uh, well, they've they're all moving to an IP-based solution, right? All those those big iron is going away, no, right? No, my, my question is what, what Cisco is doing about that because we don't have products for. No, we don't. Well, we'll get into that when we talk about HCS because we're only going to look at it from a hosted model. We'll talk about that in just a second, a few minutes. Does this make sense though so far? This is what we did. So let's just talk about how our solution may look on a network. And it's easy to, here's the easiest way from, and again, I'm not smart at all. I have to simplify things. I look at this in three phases. I'm looking at services. I'm looking at clients, and I'm looking at infrastructure. That's the three things I talk to customers about around Cisco solution. Services, some kind of service on a network, an application, what kind of clients I want to address with that, and uh, what kind of infrastructure needs those clients are going to have. So let's just look at this. So in a typical solution, we'll have a switch, POE, We'll have a client called an IP phone. And again, IP phones are another thing that may be passing away. Phones, the actual physical phone. People don't want those anymore. Now, we still are going to sell those for several years, but the, it's going to start declining significantly, I think, as these new people come through. It used to be if you had a phone, you had job security. That's the way I used to view it. You don't have that anymore. There's no job security and they ain't going to give you a phone, maybe. Right? So this phone, this IP phone is a client, but what about on a PC? Could I put a client on a PC? Absolutely. Our client is Jabber. Our Jabber client is software. We've had soft phones for many, many years. Many, many years. We've got Jabber as a client, so that's the client. Uh, 
And we're just going to stick with voice right now, but we're going to add to this in a few minutes. What's the service that, that they need? What's the service? It's called communications manager. Communications manager is our service that this needs. Here's what happens. You plug this phone in. It goes out and gets an IP address. Let's say 10, 10, 10, 6. It's got a MAC address, an address that makes it unique. Let's say MAC address A. It registers with communications manager. How do you put that phone in that communications manager? You put its MAC address in there. You put it in his MAC address. He's got a table. It's just a database. That's all it is. It's just a database. In that database, it says the MAC address. Uh, uh, you know, it could be we could dedicate an extension to it or do extension mobility where people can log in, whatever it is. The features for that, for that phone. And by the way, when it comes into Communications Manager, it actually tells Communications Manager its IP address, wherever it's sitting at today. So it actually gives information back to Communications Manager because you can move these phones anywhere you want. So if I plug a phone in and it's 10, 10, 10, 9, and then I get 10, 10, 6, or whatever it is, it's going to tell Communications Manager where it's at. This is really important. If this is, let's say this is a MAC address B. Well, MAC address B, this extension, whatever extension we want to give it, all its features. And it tells us its IP address. Let's say its IP address is 11, 11, 11, 9. This guy's 10, 10, 10, 6. All Communications Manager is, is a resource for people to say, I'm trying to find somebody. That's all he is. So if I pick up this phone, I go off hook. It sends one packet from this client to this server. One packet. One packet. And it starts a call detail record. A record of saying, here's the tracking of this call. It's a log that this call is happening. And it sends back one packet and says, play dial tone dot wave in that person's ears so they know that it's working. That's all it does. And then you dial the number. Let's say this person's extension is 3200. Your extension is 3000. You dial 3200. Zero, zero. He goes into his database and finds the extension 3200, and finds the IP address of it. Says, oh, he's calling this client over here. Is that client on the phone? What, if they're on the phone, what do I do with it? What, what, what happens when it rings? Does it have a second line appearance? All these different things. It goes through a list of those. If you're not on the phone, it says, okay, I'm going to do a setup between this IP address and this IP address. Let's see if they answer. Communications manager tells this phone ring. How do you know somebody's calling you? The phone rings. Actually, a question. Yes. Uh, administrator wants to put the uh, IP phone address in the communication manager. Uh, when, the, when the administrator adds phones in the communication manager, it uh -huh. wants to set the MAC address. No, well, he has to use the MAC address here. You have to use the MAC address because that's the only thing that uh, differentiates all the devices on a network. Your IP address doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the administrator wants to has set to put it in IP. communications manager. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you can do that with a bulk tool. You can import it. Yes. Uh, well, you can actually you can actually get a a uh, spreadsheet and just dump it in there. Like if you ordered a bunch of phones or whatever, or you could actually do self-service. Mm -hmm. Give the customer and say, hey, guess what? If you got a MAC address on your PC, here's what it is. Send it in an email, you go in there and put it in. Yeah. So you just assign extensions to MAC addresses. To MAC addresses. Yeah, exactly. That's what ties that makes that hardware unique, in theory, right? Yeah, but it's all based on the MAC address. The IP address is going to change. So now I've got this communications manager tells this phone to ring. Whether it's a hard phone or a soft phone, it's going to ring in some way, shape. It's going to make a noise. And somebody's going to answer it in some way. And then, as soon as you answer, he's going to say, this guy talked to this guy. Two RTP streams. 
one going this way, one going this way. Do you talk to you? Communications managers have set some weights. It's not going through communications manager. It's now a client to client discussion. Communications manager is out of the way. When you hang up, they go back and say, we killed that call. I stopped my call detail record, so now I can report on it. And, we, and the clients go back to normal. That's how it works. That's how it works. Not rocket science. Not rocket science. Uh, what if I want to call outside? I always want to do that. Put a router. This is now a voice gateway. Go into the PSTN. If I want to call my wife, see what's going on with her little mean dog. See what she's chewed up lately. She always chews my stuff up. She doesn't chew anybody's stuff up but mine. I had a nice hat. A hat I used to, I loved. I had that hat for two years. I left it laying down close, and that dog chewed my hat up for the two days before I left. It's the closest that dog came to getting killed, I'll tell you. Chewing up my hat. Uh, I want to call my wife. What do I do? Same thing with a PBX. I, I have a dial plan here. I pick up the phone. It sends dial tone, starts a call detail record for me. I dial 9. The, I have a routing table here. It says, oh, they're calling outside. What's the easiest, closest way to get to that? Go out this router. This router is an IP endpoint. It says, push out these numbers to the PSTN so Eddie can call his wife. When this guy sets up that call from this IP endpoint to this IP endpoint, he sets it up. He just says, hey, router IP, <laughs> talk to this phone. I'm going to set up a call and send this out. Yes. The the IP phone is also a a Wi-Fi. Oh, we we do have Wi-Fi phones. Yes, yes. Okay. And again, they can be Wi-Fi out here as well. They're on a network. They're on a network. Oh, dial, everything's a wave phone on our phones. Everything is. Dial tone dot wave, ringtone dot wave, busy ring back dot wave, all those are wave files on that phone. That's more of a PC. That phone is more of a PC than it is a phone. It's funny because in Avaria, Avaria uh, have a <coughs> generation and the, the, the tone is packed with over K and trust me to the phone. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on a MedPro card, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what's on a MedPro card? It's a card in, on a gateway or in a in something, yeah. It's still in the card, yeah. Uh -huh. Still in the card there. Yeah. Even in IP communications, yeah. And, and that's what I tell customers, you know, what, what of, and again, our competition via the, the traditional competition, they had to address this, right? So they did some really cool things. I mean, they took their CPU out and put it as a server. They took some of these cards out and put it in, in a, a media gateway and all this, that, and the other. They did some things. But here's the problem with them. They had a lot of this stuff to drag with them that, was, that wasn't easy to adapt. That's the problem. Cisco took you to the place they want to go day one. Day one. That was the thing. How are they going to get it? First of all, they had to pull this out, put a card in here, and put a server up there. And then they had to say, okay, and then we have to take this Med Pro card and put it out here. It's... You know, it's a 17-step process for dial tone still with the Avaya solution with this, still using a MedPro card and all that, which could be oversubscribed. So this, this again, call detail record. I'm talking to my wife. What did I do wrong? What did the dog do? Da, 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 da. And then as soon as we hang up, it goes to normal. Call, it closes down to call detail record. Do not make this complicated because it's not. It's client server. The server is a resource for everything I need to do. That's all he is. He's like a phone directory. Remember phone? Remember when we used to get phone books? We still get them. And nobody used them. I don't know why you would use them. Uh, you know, I don't know why they still... You still, <laughs> you still use them. I still use them. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, don't, you know, I, I can't tell you the last time. The last time I used a phone book, 
I had a pellet gun. I was show, showing my, I took my girls out and I was letting them shoot a pellet gun and the thickest books I could find were two, two uh, <laughs> that, that the pellets wouldn't go through. So I took them out there because it's cheaper to shoot a pellet gun than it is anything, right? So that's what I was doing. By, by going this direction, mm -hmm. we've created Microsoft as another, a different type of competitor in that, in, in that diagram you've shown. Oh, absolutely. Right? It, we created, so we created Microsoft to com, to compete against us, I think, rather than the other way around. No, no, no. I, no, no this is in the, this space. In, in this, in well, that. our deployment is a, actually a client server application that Microsoft could emulate, right? Yes. But let's think historically. Do you think Microsoft could have went in and replaced this? No. Today, could they replace no. this? Absolutely not. No. But, can they but can they replace the, the communications manager with Exchange, Active Directory, and a lot of other software? Well, they have a link phone system. They have a link phone. You have a phone system, but is it as robust and fully operational as ours yet? Not yet. Do you think not yet. Ever get there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, don't ever, don't ever underestimate your competition, and Microsoft is great at doing things. They're not fast, but they'll get it. They'll eventually get there. And you can't ignore the elephant in the room. But I, again, I'm going historically through what we did and how we've done it. This is, 2000, this is 2001. Did Microsoft have an answer for this in 2001? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They hadn't even thought of it. So, Eddie, um, this is all new to me. So yes. In the market today, mm -hmm. what's the mix of, of uh, the PBX players? Take like a you know, 2000C organization. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we got most of that business. Now. Oh, yeah. We were probably, well, let, let me just give you some numbers. And, and again, your theater is a little different. You're in Australia. Yeah. Hell, you guys have sold more PPX, uh, IP telephony down there. You're really good at it. We had that discussion the other night. Uh, Aust Australian, uh, there's a highest, higher attach rate of collaboration sales in Australia than anywhere in the US, anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. So they're really good at doing this. They're really good at doing this. Uh, in North America, North America, 50% of all, uh, over 50%, closer to 60% today, of all sales are IP-based, are IP-based solutions. Probably 40% of that is Cisco. Yeah. yeah, and again, very, you know, we've got, in the low end, we've got, you know, people who are still, you know, a, a lot of competition down the low end and all this, but so probably 40 there's still a lot of opportunities. Worldwide, there is not 50% saturation of IP. Yeah. Worldwide. Yeah, but in some countries, there are this percentage quite, quite big. No, in some countries, absolutely. In some countries, individual yeah. countries. For example, yeah. this number is close to 80. Is it close to 80? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you talking about IP? Yeah. IP? Yeah. Well, well and you have to be careful with those numbers, though. You have to be careful with those numbers. If I take this out and hook it up here and I put one IP car, one IP phone on the network, it's IP. How many, and I could have, I've gone to customers who've had these solutions and they've got 25 IP phones, they're counted as an IP solution, but they've got 500 other people using traditional phones. Yeah, so you have to be careful. I've seen those numbers in some cases. I'm not saying specifically for you, but I'm just saying be careful with those numbers. It goes by customer by customer basis. Really, it does, and, and uh, you kind of have to look at that. Because I've, I've went in and customers told me I'm doing IP telephony. Oh, can I see how it works and what you've got and all this, that, and the other? He said, they've got 20, literally 25 IP phones, and they've got five, over 560 other phones out there, and they're, they're considering themselves IP telephony. So you have to kind of look at those numbers. But the, uh, again, the, the saturation, you know, in, in North America, we're over 50, close to 60% saturated of IP. Yeah. So, uh, so, again, the voice gateway here is, is a part. Again, we're going back to what we have. Server, switches, clients, routers. What if I wanted to, cut, what if I wanted to take this across a WAN? Uh, I'm going to put a router out here. Make it a voice gateway. Put a switch out here, and I wanted to put an IP phone out here. Think about it. In my old drawing, I had a PBX or a key system at every site. Now I'm leveraging the infrastructure out there. Now I could have this phone, this client, 
register with that server over there without having to put a PBX out here, right? So this client, I put it in my database with so all the things I need, and it's over here. When I, let's say it's extension 4000. I pick up my phone, and I'm calling my friend. I dial 4000. This guy says, oh, it's this IP endpoint talking to this IP endpoint. Now, now we have choices. We have choices. I have a couple of ways to go. I could send that call across the PSTN, or I could send it across my WAN, just like I had when I had the two different networks and I had linked them up. In this case, this is home. <laughs> this is where it likes to go. Now, built into our IP phones and our cell phones are a way to take advantage or, or to take into consideration the limitation of the WAN. Remember, LAN, WAN, LAN. <laughs> Remember that diagram I showed you? I've got a little limited bandwidth here. Voice, when we encapsulate voice on a network, the payload is 64K to convert one voice call to data, 64K. When I wrap that up in IP and, and, uh, and put it in a frame and everything, it ends up being just south of 100K for a phone call. In a LAN environment, that's nothing. That's nothing. But maybe if I've only got two meg of bandwidth, that's a significant part of that. In all of our phones, we actually put another codec, code or decoder, in our phones and in our cell phones for low bit rate. It converts voice to 8K. And when I wrap that up, it's about 25K for phones, for a phone call. Wouldn't that be better to send across a WAN? <laughs> yeah. So when communications manager decides that he's going to send this phone call, first he asks this router, can I send a phone call across the WAN? Why would we want to ask the router that? Exactly. Because the router controls that bridge, right? He's the only one that knows. And this is going to be more and more and more important. Call admissions and control. Why? Haven't we just talked about everybody's wanting to make all these video calls now and all this, that, and the other? There might be a lot of crap going across there that that communication manager might even not know about. So we've got to let the router decide the best use of the... So there's routing, there's protocols for this router to say, yes, you can send that call across here. If he decides to send the call this way, across here, the communications manager tells the endpoint, use that low bit rate codec. You use your low bit rate codec so we don't use as much bandwidth as we have to, the minimal amount. And then we tag it up and, it's, and it works. Now, yes, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, there's routing protocols for that. There's, there's protocols that that router, that communication. Now you could just set in communications manager, the old way, is you could say communications manager, you can send six calls across there. And that's it. But, but in today's world, there's going to be so much more going on across there. We want the router to be able to determine that. Is that part of the routing protocol? Uh, it, it's, uh, th there's about four different routing protocols that will do this for you. Yeah. Ready? Yes. I'm assuming the answer is no, but is there a limitation in call managers to how many, how big the table can be and how many? Oh, thank you. How big can we have? So, initially, our communications manager, you know, we've we've grown it. How many devices, phone devices, or video devices, can we put on one call manager solution? One call uh, communications manager. How many? Thousands. Thousands. Yes. Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Why limit? Because of the actual servers and the way we do this, and I'll get into that in a second. There we have, that's called a cluster, and we'll talk about clustering in just a second. But Cisco has, doc, and again, Cisco's a very good engineering company. Cisco has documentation that says that it can show a customer how they can take, that's that one solution is called a cluster, one solution, how you can take a hundred of these and work them all in one IP solution so you could have potentially four million phones on the same network and Cisco will support it. Four million. 
Oh, absolutely. We have multiple clusters. We'll have clusters here, where are you, India? Uh, yeah. So we'll probably have a couple of clusters in India. We have some out here. We have an RTP and all this. But we have documentation that shows that we can take four million phones and put them on one network and support it. And it will work. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that cluster thing. The first communications manager that you configure is called the, uh, uh, the publisher. The publisher. It owns the database. That database, it owns it. I want to have redundancy in this, right? So the second communications manager is called a subscriber. And it gets its database from the publisher. When you boot that thing up and give it up and you say you're a communications manager, he's going to ask you a question. Am I a publisher or a subscriber? The first one, you tell him he's the publisher. And he says, oh, I get to own the database. I own the database. I can do read, write, access. I can do it all. It's mine. The second one, he says, am I a publisher or a subscriber? And he says, you say you're a subscriber. The next question, where's my publisher? Where's my publisher? Why do we want to do that? For the integrity of the database. The integrity of the database. So is a virtual machine from a single server? On this, when you talk about call manager, or call manager are physical entities? Well, early on it was a physical entity. All of our servers virtualized. So these are virtual servers. So the database is living on an array somewhere. These servers are just accessing it. The, the publisher is owning it and distributing it as he needs to. Virtual software. They come in CDs. Running on a UCS. UC on UCS. Whatever you want to run it on. Yeah. And they could be standalone servers if you want. And you can virtualize those to C series. If you really want to, you could take one C series and make it one, one make another. And you know, that's stupid. But, but yeah, these are just servers. These are servers. They're so, it's software. This is all an application. And they can be virtualized. Does this make sense? Makes sense. All right. So the publisher owns the database. The subscribers use the database. And I can have these subscribers. The subscri how, how close could these subscribers? Do these subscribers have to be in the same box? Do they have to be? Where they, how close can they be or how far away can they be? They, the, the requirement is, is 80... Uh, milliseconds round trip time on a network between these two. Let me give you an example of that. North America is a pretty big continent. I mean it's pretty big for me. Man, when you fly across it seems like forever. But some, uh, I was working up in, uh, with TELUS in uh, Canada and then we came up to this, we were talking about this. They said they could go from Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is the far end of this continent, and guarantee you 80 milliseconds round trip time with the bandwidth requirements that we have all the way to uh, Calgary. To Calgary. Three quarters of the way, over three quarters of the way across our continent. So I could have part of my voice, <laughs> one subscriber in Calgary and my publisher in Halifax. That's how far away these could be. They would guarantee the services. So it means we, this is an application, folks. Mm -hmm. This is an application. That's all it is. Cisco changed the way we, we have to think about this. It's got to be on the network. And this is, uh, this is called a cluster. This is called a cluster. A cluster is defined as two or more communication managers using the same database. One of them will be a publisher and the rest of them will be a subscriber. You could have up to 20 servers in a cluster. 20 servers in a cluster. Yes? Is the licensing centralized on the publisher in that model or is it still divided by? It's by the, the, the uh, servers themselves. Yeah. Now, Cisco's changed its licensing model. In order to download this software, what do you have to buy? In order to download this communications manager software, what do you have to buy? No, I'm just saying just to download this and use it. A license for the users. 
All you have to do is buy the license for the users and you can download the software for the servers. And if you've got your own servers, you download and put it on your, on your servers. So if you've already installed, if you've already got a UCS installation, somebody's already bought UCS and they have a, some, uh, enough uh, uh, server capacity there, they could buy 20, you know, 50 licenses and put the clients out here. Don't, they don't even have to be uh, phones, they just have to be software. And then you can download this communications manager and our presence server and run them. Used to not be that way. But this makes it much more easy to, to, to get this out there and, and, and get customers using it. Really does. Yes, well, it's, it's VM. It's, it's VMware and VM. No, no, no. No, no. On the, the C series, when we, it has to be C series, but it can be virtualized. Yeah. But it could be in a UCS and it doesn't have to be dedicated. That server has to be all communications managers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolute. You have to run Linux. It's running on Linux, right? So you're going to have to create a virtual machine. So you're going to have to have VMware to create the virtual machine. It's going to have to have so many CPUs and all this. And again, the reference guide that you're talking about, did you look at how many pages it was? 1,200 pages. 1,200 pages. So if you want to go to sleep for the rest of your life, <laughs> just print that out and put it beside your bed table. You read a half a page and go to sleep at night. That'll take you for the rest of your life. No, uh, you can buy different servers like I will, uh, IBM servers and everything can be, but again, we would rather do the C series if you want to do a separate server. Yes, sir. Yeah, generally, you had stealing your thunders, but you have a certain number of licenses for a certain number of subscribers. The CM comes on board, it's connected to a server, and now you have to get the call manager contact communications manager now to talk to and enable X number of phones based on those licenses and tell the phone now back when... Well, the licenses go into communications manager, right? Mm -hmm. The licenses are in communications manager. But you've got all these phones that are all connected up to the switch that are right now disabled until communications manager is enabled the licenser. Mm -hmm. And now it now needs to go out and survey the world for the IT phones. And well, you have, to, you have to put the... Well, there, there's, there's a couple of ways around that. You could actually license all these. You can license Communications Manager and actually say, guess what? We've got 500 licenses. The first 500 users who come to you, I want you to record their MAC addresses and hand them out IP addresses. We can even let, or, or phone numbers. We can even let people choose their own phone numbers if we want to. Yeah, so it's easier to deploy this stuff than you, than you think. Uh, probably not. I'll tell you this, I would always like to have services there in my first week. Give us a method for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, ma'am. Did you have a question? No, I was just saying, yeah, yeah you have 500 phones, you know, yeah. I mean, an IT department, if it's small, you need yeah. services. Oh, you're definitely going to need some yeah. kind of service. So, so day, day one through seven support. Absolutely. And people are used to that. They, they were used to that. Yes, sir. Is there a convergence of, um, of data and voice? Specialists and IT specialists, are they converging in inside the organizations? Yeah. Or is it still very siloed? Uh, it's it's in essence they have thrown voice over to the data guys and they they own it. They own it. I mean and, and what they've done is they've kept the voice guys because and they almost become specialists inside of there. But uh, yeah, like uh, you don't have the phone technicians running around moving phones and everything, but your senior guys are still there because, you know, you still have to talk to the PSTN people. You still have to worry about dial plans and all this, that, and the other, which are totally different than the traditional guys have had. So you may have a little specialist or whatever. They probably don't mar earmark them specialists. They just probably just do a special job. Yeah. So, but they, you don't see telecom and datacom now. It's all datacom. It's all day to come. Now, I've got, right before a break, right before a break, I always want to do this before a break or something. What happens, 
Now here's where Cisco knows networking, and this is where Cisco has its strength. And I'm going to go back to, to 2000, 2001, when we were first selling this against our competition. And again, this hasn't changed really much except the protocols that we use. We, we, back then we used SCCP as the protocol that ran across the network. Today we use SIP. <laughs> That's the only difference in, in how any of this works since 2001. That's the only difference is the protocol that the, the, the clients are using because SIP is more of a standard-based client and SCCP was not as efficient as SIP once we uh, got our own proprietary version of it like everybody has. But what happens when the WAN goes down? Oh, say what? Oh, okay, so I have a client that can't see his server. Think about it. On this side of the, here's my server. There's my client. I have no data path to get there. Excuse me? Yeah, but man, you got a server. You, yeah, you, you, you'd have to put a server out there? Who wants to put a server at a branch? Be somewhere else out there. Yeah. What? Just think about this. This. Just think about this. if you are, have not got connection back to your email server. Let's say you're at your house. Your internet goes down. You open the Outlook or whatever mail clients you're using to connect to either Cisco's mail or your internet service provider's mail or whatever. If you can't get there, what happens? That client is useless, right? It's client without a server. It sets, it sets there and goes, well, I'd love to be able to give you your mail, but can't do it. This is early on, back when I was, had a lot more hair than I had now. Uh, we would put communications manager here, or we'd put it out here and test it with customers and move it there, but we wouldn't put IP clients here. Why? Because we knew WANs go down. And we were not going to risk our customers' business on that. Very, very quickly, took less than three and a half months, Cisco said, guess what, we've got, what devices do we have out here that Cisco that might be able to help us? Right. They created a version of software that goes on the router called SRST. SRST stands for Survivable Remote Site Telephony. And you know what? This was the biggest one of the biggest differentiators and proof that the network does matter and our networking devices can do more. And I'm going to show you a, you know, pictures are better than words, and I'm going to have to turn my volume up here. Oh, i got to get my cable. Uh, so SRST, let me turn my volume up as far as I can get it. And I'll put my PC up here so maybe it'll, the sound will go a little bit better. They didn't give me speakers here. But we've had this since 2001, and I'll show it to you. So, communications manager at headquarters here, IP WAN here, branch router, branch router is connecting to the PSTN at any city, location, whatever. Keep alives go from the client back to the server. If I want to call my friend over here and say, hey, let's go to lunch today, let's go have an Italian, I pick up the phone. Communications manager says it's this IP, this MAC address sets up with this MAC address. You want to talk? These two IP addresses talk. Uses real time protocol. <laughs> Communications manager is not in the flow of the traffic. <laughs> if we want to go make reservations to have pizza, because everybody likes pizza, we dial out, go out our local gateway, use the DSP resources in the router. If we want to call our friend here at headquarters and tell him, hey, we're going out to the pizza place and you can't go, we can actually do that. Call admissions control uses the low bit rate codec. It goes across the IP WAN. But what if there's a failure? What if there's a failure? Again, you've got a client that can't reach its server. The client will try three times 
to reach the server. You go wham, wham, wham. If it can't reach the server, he's going to rehome back to a software application running in that router called SRST. And SRST is going to have the local dial plan and the local facilities to know about the phones locally, only for that site, and it will be the call setup and control for that site. So you can still call your friend here, so it's eventually going to do that. He still knows those guys. He still knows you can dial out to your PSTN. And he still knows that if you do four digit dialing, here's the way I dial it. Add the digits and send it to the PSTN. Cisco had this in 2001. 2001. This is, this was, boy, I tell you, you think our competition hated this? You ain't kidding. This was brutal. This was brutal for them. That one, that router makes a big difference. Their answer? Well, a lot of times, it took them several years to get an answer, and then their answer ended up being a server out there, a separate box. That's not attractive. This is what Cisco came up with. So again, SRST, it's built into all of our ISRs. You license it. You license it in there. You put the voice on it and does it. Uh, well, you know, they'd probably pretty much given up on this by this point. They probably said, you know what, the cat's out of the bag, I can't do anything about this. The good part about this is, is now if I want to call four digit from here to here, I don't even have a choice, to, I have to go through my PSTN. So it actually means sometimes I leave a few more trunks to the PSTN than I would actually need, just in case this happens. Yeah, that's what it does for me. So it actually helped them a little bit. Does that make sense? That makes sense. This is a differentiator, folks. Still is today. It still is today. Still is today. Because why? You're going to have people all over the place. You're going to have these sites and all this. And this is a, something that we do very, very, very well. Well, if, if that's fine. That's fine. But then again, if you have a mobile phone, what if somebody leaves you a voicemail message? Where do you want that message to be? on the phone in your service provider if it's a business phone you want your messages maybe confidential information in that you file. in voicemail yeah Ooh. I got customers who don't like that they want all of their vo business voicemail on their system <laughs> they want to be able to forward it huh well and, and some of my customers again some customers don't want voicemail some people voicemail is critical for them they have distribution lists and they send out information. The executives send out information through voicemail. And they want, they, that's how they use. Again, different ages, different uses. The thing about it is, is all customers are different. The point yeah. I'm getting at is that yeah. why, do you have, why do you want two phones? One on your desk, one on your hand. Well, we can. We can load Jabber on your phone. Yeah, load Jabber on your phone. It's your business phone using Communications Manager. And guess what? We can do that when you walk out the door, too, if you'd like. Yeah. Again, we're get it, eventually getting there. This is just building the story, building the story. So now that we've got the service up here called Communications Manager that does call setup and control, right now just for phones, <laughs> we're going to add to that. <clears throat> it's going to be connected up on a network, which is infrastructure. The router is infrastructure. The router is a voice gateway. Now, inside of this voice gateway, there's some unique hardware inside of that, these DSP resources we have. That's what makes that thing be able to convert traditional telephony, PRIs, into packetized voice. It creates phone bridges for us, so when we want to bridge in a bunch of phones together and all that, that's what that piece of hardware they're doing. They're infra that's infrastructure as well. The clients, again, could be the IP phone that we sell, and we sell a plethora of phones whether it be looking like that, a little 9900 and all this, that, and the other. <clears throat> we sell uh, uh, software called Jabber, which is our client, that could be on the PC, could be on a Mac, could be on an iPad, could be on an iPhone, could be on an Android. All of these are our Jabber 
clients. Software clients. Those are their Jabber clients. Uh, communications manager does the setup and control. Again, with licensing, you buy a license for a phone, the Jabber clients, what it, the license for the communications manager, you have the ability to download the communications manager software, put it on the server of your choice. We'll give you the specification for the server. And again, we'd love for that to be a Cisco server. We also have another application that you can run there called uh, our uh, Cisco Unified Present Server. Present Server, CUPS. That's IM. So with the license for the client, after you get that, you can download these two servers. These two servers. And this gives you the ability to do chat, IM and chat. And do voice. Yeah. It's a Cisco Unified Presence Server. Cisco's Unified Presence Server. If you want voice messaging, and again, we've had that little discussion. Some people do, some people don't. Cisco has another application, another service out there. Cisco Unity Connection, CUC, is an application server that provides voice messaging. So if somebody calls from the outside or somebody from the inside to my phone and I, it ring no answer, it rings for how many times, Communications Manager can be configured to send that phone call to my voicemail box. It's just a bunch of, it's a server with hard drives. Again, can be virtualized, can run in a UCS platform, and everything. Wow, bunch of servers, isn't it? Just a bunch of servers is all we're selling here. Well, they are applications, yeah. Well, I, well, servers are, I mean, I guess that's a legacy. It's a legacy, yeah. It's an application. It's an application, yeah. I'm going to start doing that. It's an application. Huh? Yeah. 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 It's a virtualized app application that can be virtualized. It's an application that can be virtualized inside of there, right? So that gives us voice messaging, I am in presence, all of these across all of these port platforms, across all of these. Now think about it. If I have an iPhone and I load this on it, then guess what? I could take that iPhone not only inside of here, but I could take it outside of here and actually connect back up. That means my iPhone anywhere I want to use it. It brings us back to security with once I walk outside of my building and I'm not using Wi-Fi and I'm using cell, I'm going to get charged for that data service in one thing, but I'm also connected to the internet. I have to use the internet to get back through there. So if I have the internet and I want to connect back up and I take my iPhone out there and I have Jabber running on it, this client has to log back into that server so we have to create a secure tunnel. That secure tunnel is done by software called AnyConnect. AnyConnect. We have software that rides, I'm going to, it's, it's a always on VPN client. AnyConnect is. It runs on, it can run on your, all your clients. It runs on your clients. It can run on PC, Mac, whatever you want. And it runs on there. When you're inside of Cisco and you log into Cisco here, it doesn't activate a VPN because you're in a secure environment. You're using wireless here. You're using whatever you want. As soon as you leave Cisco, let's say you go to Starbucks or home or wherever you get an internet connection, it realizes you're not on a Cisco network. So it automatically activates and now your client has a secure tunnel back to its server behind the firewall. It also will filter all of your web, mail tra web traffic back through there too. It will <laughs> filter your web traffic back there. No, no, no. With uh, the licenses you get, you can get uh, presence, the, the basic license, you get presence in this. 
you, uh, the more advanced licenses we have, you can have voice messaging and on. So for each, each employee, you have to license you could, you could, Well, you could get a, a uh, universal license for that. Yeah, you could get a higher level license that gives you all this. You could have, actually have an IP phone and a mobile device. With the same user, right? With the same user, same yes, yes, same, same number. So let's say we have 500 licenses. Mm -hmm. What happens to the 501? 501? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Even if Doesn't work. Not, I mean, even if the 500 users are not. All right, so <coughs> I'll say this. It will work for 30 days, and we'll have a report come out and say you're over your license limit, and on day 31 it won't work. Yeah. We'll give you that period to be able to do that. Yeah, I think Cisco's got that set up in 9.0, because they didn't like the fact that we were just cutting people off. And that message comes from the communications manager. Communications manager. That's where all your licensing goes. It's where our licensing goes. Communications manner is, is the centerpiece of everything we do. Everything we do.